Welcome to our channel. You'll agree with me that supernovae are among those celestial phenomena that, at least once in our lives, we've all heard about. We'd like to add that these objects are the protagonists of numerous discoveries that have helped us better understand not only stars but also particle physics and the universe on a large scale. We've already mentioned supernovae in several videos, but there we only introduced the topic. Now it's time to delve deeper into these objects. Let's embark together on this new journey to discover the universe and our understanding of it. To start, supernovae are explosions characterized by the emission of an enormous amount of energy in a short period of time. Think about it. Sometimes the brightness of a supernova can exceed that of an entire galaxy. We will refer to supernovae both as objects we can observe in the sky and as events, since they are very bright but short-lived, usually lasting weeks or months. This time frame, compared to the typical timescales in astrophysics, becomes essentially negligible. Supernovae are often the final stage of a star's evolution. Sure, a supernova can be observed at intergalactic distances and its shock wave expands over enormous volumes, but the events that cause this explosion occur on a stellar scale. Supernovae can be divided into various groups based on the chemical characteristics of their spectra. The spectrum of a source is, in a sense, its identity card, providing us with many different pieces of information about the object itself and sometimes even about what lies between us and what we are observing. The division mentioned earlier is based on the presence or absence of certain elements in the supernovae spectra and how rapidly their brightness changes over time. However, we will not focus on this division, but rather on another one based on the origin of these events and what causes the explosion. This division sees supernovae split into two main types. Those that form through the evolution of a single star and those that form through the evolution of binary systems. Let's start with the first type, supernovae that result from the evolution of a single star. Stars with an initial mass greater than 10 times that of the Sun manage to form an iron core through successive nuclear fusions. However, after the formation of iron, they can no longer ignite further fusions, and the balance is lost. Gravity is no longer counteracted, and the stellar structure begins to collapse rapidly, reaching speeds of about 70,000 km per second. This collapse brings the central region to extreme conditions of temperature and density, similar to those of an atomic nucleus, thus triggering the explosion. Neutrinos play a crucial role at this stage. An enormous amount of neutrinos is produced in the innermost regions of the star and, being unable to escape due to the high density, they cause an outward push that triggers the explosion. The total energy of the emitted neutrinos is about 100 times the kinetic energy of the expelled material and 10,000 times the energy emitted in the form of light. After the explosion, in most cases, a compact object remains, such as a neutron star or a black hole, along with the expelled material that may not permanently move away from the explosion site. Now let's move on to the second type of supernovae those that form as a result of the evolution of a binary system. The starting point is a white dwarf, what remains after a medium-large mass star has stopped fusing material within it. The white dwarf accretes material from its companion, a red giant. This accretion leads the white dwarf to reach the temperature and density necessary to ignite carbon fusion, causing a detonation. In this case, the object is completely disintegrated by the explosion, and no neutron star or black hole remains. This type of supernova is particularly interesting because, being all extremely similar in terms of chemical composition and mass, they all reach the same peak brightness, about 5 billion times greater than that of the sun. This makes them excellent, standard candles, for measuring cosmic distances. Knowing the intrinsic brightness of an object and measuring how much light reaches us, we can determine its distance. It is estimated that about three supernovae occur in our galaxy every century. The explosion of a supernova near us, but not too close, would allow us to obtain valuable information on neutrino physics and stellar evolution. How many of these things did you already know? Write it in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next ones and share it with anyone who might be interested.